Alberta's proposed legislation on gender policies for youth has drawn strong reaction across Canada, and Alberta's outgoing opposition leader and former Premier Rachel Notley has also expressed concerns. I sat down with her in Ottawa on Friday to discuss that issue, as well as her thoughts on the politics of carbon pricing and her future after politics. Nice to see you again. Really appreciate making the time. Lovely to be here. I, I'm going to start uh, with the news out of Alberta this week. The Premier's decision to uh, put in place new policies around transgender youth and, and, and children. Uh, he, she says that this is about protecting children from making irreversible decisions uh, that they should be waiting until they're adults to make. And, the, and, and I guess the other language she uses is parental rights. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the way that the Premier is framing this issue? I think she's being uh, incredibly disingenuous uh, and, and also the subject of, of what she's doing, the, the substance of what she's doing is very cruel. This is not about protecting children uh, unless what you mean is protecting them from a, a rather long-term campaign of misinformation generated primarily by uh, some extreme elements of the UCP. Uh, the fact of the matter is that um, a lot of the things that they claim to be protecting children from don't really even exist. Right. But what this actually is, is um, a, 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 a real attack on the health care uh, needs of uh, transgender children. Um, and it is also an attack on, on the safety uh, and, the, and the ability to freely express themselves of transgender children. LGBTQ children and all kids who can benefit from um, a science-based sexual health education. I want to move on to some other issues. Did want to get that out of the way because it is news this week on climate change. This fall, you called on the federal government to provide a carve out for people who were also using natural gas. Of course, they did it for home mm -hmm. heating oil, mm -hmm. which primarily affected people in Atlanta, Canada. Um, the prime minister made it clear there'll be no more carve outs. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that undermines the, the policy, the national carbon price mm -hmm. policy? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me start from the from from the uh, from first principles, yeah. which is that we have to work harder than ever to address the threat of climate change, and and there are a number of different policy tools that we can use to do that. And as you know, based on my own record, mm -hmm. uh, carbon pricing is a policy tool that can be uh, helpful in that in that effort. But it doesn't work if it's not applied equally. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem with, with what we're seeing now um, in terms of the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the slow uh, eating away of it in certain places that, that appear to be just far too politically mm -hmm. uh, convenient. And so, um, but I do need to be clear that, that we, this is not a matter. I'm not, I'm not there saying, oh yeah, let's tear down the carbon pricing system and then carry on our merry way because that would be a, a, a horrible decision um, because we do need to act urgently to, to address climate change and to reduce our emissions as a country. You, you put a carbon price in place before, Justin Trudeau. Do you still yeah. believe that carbon pricing is the best way to influence people's behavior and attack emissions? It is one of the ways, okay. and and the question of whether it's the best way. Um, listen, I'm 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 always happy to look at the evidence, and and we do need to be careful about doing it equitably. And and you know, people sometimes ask me, oh, you know, what what are some of the things you that you think you made a mistake on mm -hmm. when you were in government? Mm -hmm. And and uh, I do think that we didn't listen enough to folks living in rural Alberta mm -hmm. about the disproportionate impact on them of this policy. On the cap on the oil and gas sector, you. you you also had strong views on that previously. Mm -hmm. Now that it's, uh, well, we're in draft regulations, mm -hmm. I guess, 35 to 38 uh, percent. Do you, do you believe that this unfairly targets the oil and gas sector the same way Premier Smith does, or do you see the necessity for a cap on those emissions? Um, I think that we have to look at caps on emissions. I don't think that the current proposal is, is realistic, so I think that we need it's to ambitious. be... too uh, ambitious? Yeah, it's yeah. too much, and, it, and, and it's going to have uh, consequences which, which go beyond the stated objective. Um, and so I think we do have to get back to the table to come up with something more realistic. But I think that uh, depending on the sector, uh -huh. uh, different tools are in place. And as things stand now, um, uh, the oil and gas industry pays a carbon price, but yeah. they don't pay the full carbon price. Yeah. And so we have to look at other tools. Let's talk a little bit about politics. Okay. <laughs> when, you, when you became premier, of course, the, the right was split. Uh, mm -hmm. It was divided, uh, and that is no longer the case. I know that you believe the NDP is still a force mm -hmm. inside the province, but mm -hmm. do you think the NDP can form government when the right is united in this way? 
I absolutely believe that we can. And, and uh, you know, as, as I was giving a, a talk uh, the other night, and the reality is, is that sometimes uh, victory takes more than one election cycle. Mm -hmm. But uh, if someone had, had uh, uh, t said back in 2019 that the NDP against a united right was going to win more seats in Calgary than that united right, most people would have said we were dreaming in technicolor. Mm -hmm. Yet that's exactly what happened. We got 44% of the vote in the last election. Yep. There are governments all across this country that would kill for 44% of yep. the vote. Yep. Fair. The relationship between Alberta and the federal government is always, it's always kind of complicated, provincial mm -hmm. federal relationships are. I, and I wonder whether you think it is too challenging and where you point the, the blame for that tension. Uh, and I'm not saying about any particular government, but, mm -hmm. but where that tension is from and whether it concerns you that, that there is so much of it. Um, you know, listen, the, the, our uh, country is structured in a way that does uh, almost encourage uh, a form of uh, friction sure. uh, between uh, Ottawa and Western Canada, Ottawa and Alberta. Alberta does contribute a tremendous amount yep. to the economy uh, and we have many people from all over the country that come to Alberta as well either for a short or longer yep. term period of time. So so there is no question that people in Alberta sometimes feel quite rightly that their voice isn't heard and their experience isn't heard mm -hmm. here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do everything we can to fix that. But at the same time, it, it frustrates me right now in that we have these extremist politicians who are going past the legitimate policy differences and simply wedging anger for their own uh, destructive political agendas. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a thing that we need to move away from. Most politicians, when uh, they're leaving, and I've done lots of these kinds of interviews, yeah. when I say, "Is that it?" They just leave the they just leave the door open, just like just a little smidge. Right. Is, is the door open a little tiny bit for you still to, to return to, to politics? To return to politics it, uh, at, at at some level, you at know, any point. I, I I think it's very very unlikely in an elected position. Um, you know, and obviously you never say never, <laughs> which I should probably not say because now everyone's going to think I've just That's said right. yes, That's right. which is not true. <laughs> No, I, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed elected politics and I certainly want to be involved uh, in the background and to, su to support uh, my party, the movement, um, uh, social democracy all across the yeah. country. Uh, but me in an elected role, I, I, think, uh, I think I'm finished. Okay. Rachel Notley, thank you for making the time. Appreciate thank it. you. Nice to see you.